All right, well, uh, fancy meeting you here again. Um, congratulations on the win and congratulations on bringing home the trophy for Ford. Um, can you talk us through the, you know, just what that means to bring that home? Well, you know, Michigan is, is just a, overall an important race for, you know, everybody at Ford and Roush Yates and, and really all the teams. They, they, they make you well aware of, of the importance of the Heritage Trophy and, and how much they want to keep it in their lobby. So, you know, I got a nice text from Edsel Ford last night to make sure that uh, he, he, he knew that, uh, that I knew how happy he was, but uh, he made sure that I was well aware that they didn't want to keep it for one day and they wanted to bring that trophy back. So we're just really happy for everybody at Ford. Our, our Bush uh, Light Apple Ford Mustang was really fast again today. I had a little bit of trouble there at the end and in three and four, and, and Denny was uh, really, really good down there. So uh, we were able to uh, do a little defensive driving and, and keep him back there and make it to victory lane again. Awesome. Well, we're going to um, take some questions for you from the media. Um, let's kick it off here with Zach Sterniolo. Go ahead, Zach. Kevin, congrats again. Um, where does the season rank for you and how consistent you've been? You've had dominant seasons before, um, but uh, now already notch win number six uh, in the regular season here. Um, what makes this season unique? Well, I think COVID makes it unique first off and, and just the circumstances that, that it takes to get to the racetrack. Um, you know, I think a lot of that just goes into – you know, how prepared our team is and the details that they're covering to uh, get the cars right and get them close and come to the racetrack and watch the pit crew perform and watch Rodney make great calls. And, you know, uh, I get to race the car on the racetrack and do the best that I can. So um, on the days when, when things aren't, you know, going like we want them to with the handling of the race car, we figure out a way to, you know, have some good pit strategy or restarts or what, you know, they have a great pit stop on pit road and, you know, when one side of it's down, there's there's somebody there to, to pick up the pieces on the other side. And that's that's what it takes to, uh, you know, to run well week in and week out. Because in, in the circumstances that we're in, you're just not going to hit it every week. You're just going to have to battle through it and try to have the best day that you can. So as far as, you know, where it ranks, it's, it's really hard. I, I just, you know, I just, I don't think about things like that. I just go week to week. And, and as you get to the end of the season, you can kind of sit back and, and really, uh, look back on the things that have happened and, and that's you know that's the same thing that we'll do this year but it's been a great year you know can't argue with that. The car looked a little bit more challenging to drive the last couple of runs there than, than it had throughout the rest of the weekend. Um, was the track any different today than it was yesterday? Um, I, I would say yes you know just because you know we had more rubber on the racetrack it was about eight degrees warmer when we started the race today um, you know, the, the PJ one was a little further up the racetrack and running well. So, you know, they did a really good job with the racetrack this weekend and making that third line usable because, you know, when you, you know, like yesterday when, when I had a good car and, and could go anywhere on the racetrack and make it work, uh, Denny had that today. And when I try to block high, he'd just go low. And when I go low, he'd go high. It just gives you a lot of options when you have three options in, instead of two. Uh, because at that point the leader has a 50 or the car in front of you has a 50% chance of, of blocking that move. So, um, you know, I think the racetrack was, was racy all weekend. I think today my car was tighter from, from the get go, uh, mostly in, in turns three and four. I just, I never could get the car to the center of the corner like I wanted to. Thanks and congrats again. Thank you. All right. We'll take our next question from Jeff Gluck. Go ahead, Jeff. Evan, I, I feel like I recall the past that when we've asked you about like what car you have, say like at Homestead or something, you're, you're, you've been like, hey, look, I, I just drive what, what Rodney brings. I don't really care. But this car now, uh, it's three for three. I mean, it's your Brickyard 400 car and now you've swept. Uh, will you be interested to at least know when, when the next time this car is going to roll out? I bet we don't run it anymore, uh, to be honest with you. You know, I think that there's just – there's so many different styles of racetracks that we're, that we're going to – as, as we go forward here, obviously we're going to a road course next week and then we go to a low down force track, two, two races in a row um, at Dover. And then you have a super speedway car and then you go, you know, into, into um, short tracks in Darlington with high down force cars. So I know you won't run it at Vegas. You won't run it at Charlotte. Um, you know, honestly, I, I don't think you'll run this car anymore. Hmm. Thank you. Yep. All right, we'll take our next one from Dustin Albino. Go ahead, Dustin. Yeah, Kevin, congrats on the win again. Um, this is your ninth straight top five finish, which has occurred along for you. Six wins this year. 
obviously you're a past champion, but have you ever been in a zone like this before? Well, look, we've had some great years. I wouldn't call this our best. You know, I think, um, you know, 2015 and 2018 were, were great years. Uh, we closed 2014 uh, really good. But, you know, it's it's hard to tell, you know, what, what, what the end of the year is going to bring as far as, you know, this, this could be the last win. You might, might win six more. You just, you just never know. I, you know, I think the most important thing is to just stay focused on the, on the week to week attitude of, of trying to prepare the best that you can win or lose uh, last week on Monday, you have to be preparing for the next week. So it's, it's just, it's ultra important to have a short term memory. And, and, you know, I think our team does a really good job at that and making sure that we're prepared for the next race, the best that we can. And, you take all that you can out of that on Monday morning, and then you move on to the next one. Thank you. All right, our next question for Kevin will come from Bob Pockers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Kevin, I'm not totally sure the math, but I can't figure out a way that you wouldn't be on the pole for the road course since you won the race and you're the leader in points and second and fastest lap. So what, what does it mean? I mean, what does it, I guess, I don't want to say what it mean to be on the pole, but what does it mean that fact that like now you're kind of earning your starting position? Yeah, I'm a little bit torn on that. Um, that wasn't my vote. I voted for one through 36 random draw every week, you know, for charter teams. So, um, you know, I think it's, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. You know, obviously, I think that there's definitely some merit to it as far as earning your position in the things that you do. You know, I think in the position that we're in, um, there's also some merit in, in keeping it mixed up and keeping it fair and having some new players at the front and giving them an opportunity because at some point during the year, you know, some of those guys are going to gonna qualify good and have a chance to to have a good weekend. And, you know, if you're you're back in the you know, in the mid part of the of the of the pack and, and you, you don't have an opportunity to qualify you know, sometimes those are taken away. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. I'm good. I'm good with whatever, you know, I think um, me, me leading uh, everybody into turn one at Daytona could be interesting because I have no freaking clue where I'm going uh, as, as we go down there, but most everybody in the field is the same way. We'll, we'll prepare the best that we can and, and hope that, hope that we can make it around the first lap, um, you know, with uh, all the wheels still headed in the right direction. Thank you. All right, we'll take our next one from Lee Spencer. Go ahead, Lee. Thank you, and congratulations, Harvick. That was just mind-blowing this weekend. Um, next on the, the all-time win list is is Kyle Busch with 56 wins. You kind of wish he was running a little bit better, so at least it was more of a contest when you hit that milestone. Um, I don't think that's going to be a contest. I, you know, I think as, as you, as you look at the longevity of Kyle's career, he's going to be, he's going to be, he'll be way ahead of that number as, as he goes forward. So that's, that's, that's sort of a, I guess that's sort of a, sort of a short term thing. Um, as you look at it, because he's going to be, he's going to be around this deal a lot longer, a lot longer than I am. And, and, um, you know, I think as, as you look at his, his past and the things that he's, that he's done, he's going to keep winning. So, you know, I think that that's, um, you know, like, like I say, I think that's, that's short term, um, you know, for the next few years and, and then we'll see where it goes from there. And with all the craziness going on in 2020, is it kind of like a, a ray of hope or, you know, a bright light that you're able to compete at this level? I mean, just consistently week in and week out. Well, it says a lot about our organization and a lot about our team and, and how they can prepare race cars and the details that are going into those race cars and the things that they're doing. So, you know, I think as, as you look at all of that, and it's just, it's, it's all about the people. Um, it's the people that are here every week grinding away at the racetrack. It's the people at the race shop, uh, Roush Yates, uh, Ford Performance. It just takes, it takes so many people to do what we're doing. And I think, you know, this is really something that, that we've been, fortunate to excel at adapt we're good at adapting and adjusting and, and you know trying to figure things out on the fly and, and and I think that's what experience brings you with with this particular race team so um I love I love my guys to death they do a great job I hate not being able to celebrate with them and that, that's the part that that really frustrates me more than anything and you know I think as as you look at it I mean it's going to be this way for a while I, I don't see this uh, really changing in, into, you know, the majority of, of next year. So, you know, I think as uh, I think this is going to be the new normal for, for, you know, the foreseeable future, in my opinion. 
Appreciate your time. Safe travels. Yeah, thank you. All right, Harvick. Well, that is all we'll give you um, for this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations, and we'll see you next week at the road course. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.